Hey everyone, What's welcome up? to Truth Lies Shenanigans. I go by the name Neo Nix, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us. If this is your first time, you picked a great show to check us out. For today's show, no hot topics today. I do have a quick fire question for the host, but the majority of shows for today is dedicated to our incredible guest, a civil rights icon, the youngest member of the Little Rock Nine, Carlotta Walls Lanier will be joining the show telling her chilling story of integration in the Deep South. We'll be sharing your comments and taking your questions. And with all we've had going on in the last four years, it will be an amazing thing to hear the thoughts and feelings of a true leader against racial injustice. And of course, make sure you stick around to the end for our game show where we'll test out our host's knowledge on black history. So make sure you share this live feed with your friends. I'm certain they'll appreciate it. Now, before we get into it, let me introduce you to my wonderful co-hosts, our professor, writer, editor, journalist out of Washington, D.C., Ms. Lizzie Enders. What's up, what's up, everyone? Happy Sunday, fun day. I'm so happy to have all of you here to join us for this special moment in the history where we are listening and hearing from a living legend. Sit back and enjoy and learn a little something. Learn a little something. Yep. <laughs> and our very own rock star with the amazing band Fallen Machine coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Mr. Rob B. Rock. What's up? What's up? Hey, everyone. Uh, yeah, like Liz was saying, this is just an amazing show to be joining us for. It's, uh, it's not every day that you get to spend some time with a living historical icon. It's, uh, I'm really looking forward to this conversation today. And streaming from Atlanta, Georgia, a model, actor, college student, and the show's infusion of youth and vigor, Miss <laughs> Gianni Storm. Hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> um, I'm very honored to actually be here. I kept telling myself that um, throughout the week that I was very excited for Miss Lanier to be joining us. So I just can't wait to get into her story. I've been reading all about her. And for the people that I've you know, ask to join in. I hope that you guys ask some really good questions. All right. All right, so if you've never been to TLS, Truth Lies Shenanigans before, let me tell you a bit about us. Our hosts and our guests share their truths and opinions with you, call out those lies and point out any ridiculous shenanigans going on. And on our show, we always try to have some fun with shenanigans of our own. Our show streams live just about everywhere but you can find us quickly on YouTube. Just go to tlsshow.com or search at TLS Live Show across all major social media platforms. Also, make sure you subscribe to the audio replay of the podcast on iTunes or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Now, before we get to our honored guest, I do have a quick fire question for you guys. Oh. All right, hip hop radio host Charlemagne the God recently threw shade at the star of the biopic Judas and the Black Messiah, Lakeith Stanfield, saying he was born to play his role as the Judas. <laughs> Lakeith clapped back, This is what hoes do. Now, co host, <laughs> what would you have responded? Let's start with Gianni Storm. Um, I, I agree a little bit with. Charlemagne in that Lakeith, really? they have a long lasting like hate back uh love hate relationship but i agree a little bit with Charlemagne that the keith played it a little bit too well um <laughs> all right robbie rock he... yeah. <laughs> uh, you know i watched the articles i watched the videos i still don't understand the nonsense going on just quit throwing shade and enjoy your mutual success all right lizzie enders agreed the donkey of the day is still out there hee-hawing, I see. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Like, how do you act so well? That's what actors do. That's how they get awards. That's how they get Oscars. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Charlemagne the God is just, I mean, he's, he does this a lot, though. He does this to a lot of people. He's just, he, he can be rude sometimes. So he's doing his thing, and I, I might have done the same thing that Keith did, to be honest, so. But for those that what need a little, go ahead, go ahead, Lizzie, go ahead. You're gonna say no, I was just gonna 
you know, a little background in terms of who Charlemagne the God is really. Like I am kind of suspect of someone his own shadiness, lest we forget that he was accused of rape twice. Really? That he admitted to, he admitted to um, getting the young lady drunk, putting Spanish fly in her drink, and really? then having sex with her. Really? Yes, he admitted. To that. Uh, yeah. So I've it, never liked Charlemagne the God. The background. <laughs> how dare you come out and try to dog someone or throw shade at someone for their acting chops? Like he was there to act a part in a movie, and he did it well. Yeah. So I, I don't know and what else to say. And for those that might need a little background, Charlemagne the God hosts the radio morning show, The Breakfast Club, and Lakeith Stanfield can be seen on TV show Atlanta and the hit film Get Out. Now, as Johnny said, they apparently have history. Um, the interview was during was during an interview with uh, Daniel Kaluuya the co-star of the film, which is about the murder of Fred Hampton, uh, the Black Panther leader. So now I want to point out, Lakeith ultimately did delete that post, but he later posted a diss track titled Automatic with an image of Charlemagne with big lips, a hat, and a minstrel character. So anybody think he went too far with this one? No. Not as far as, not as far as, <laughs> like, you know, if, if you can't take the heat, get your ass out the kitchen. Like Charlemagne has been ridiculous <laughs> over the years in the way that he has done this shock jock thing. And I, don't, I personally, I don't like shock jocks. Like, I don't believe in tearing down people just because it will garner you attention, mm -hmm. just because it's the cool thing to do. And so, you know, if anybody deserves it, it's Charlemagne. Who is a Wendy Williams protege, I might remind oh, you. Oh, is she? Uh, is he? He is. He is. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Charlemagne's not my Start. favorite either. Start. Yeah. yeah. Well, Gianni, you were on his side a minute ago. I'm on his side, but he's not my favorite. I'm on his side in the fact that Lakeith wouldn't do this to white out white media outlets. Like it's easier to pick on the black media outlets because you're not going to receive as much like backlash. Like there's always something to say. There's always an opinion people have on like our black content creators and, and radio stations and stuff. And I mean, for some good reason, but in this case, I think he did go too far. Like what we all know what that picture symbolized at one point. So yeah well not at one point like the imagery like, like I, I really take exception with the imagery because if this was anyone from any other ethnic background using the same imagery people would be losing their minds but i, I don't care if this is a black on black attack in the media like in social media this is just inappropriate it doesn't belong anywhere in the, the social fabric this is just ridiculous yeah so my, again, my, my point is don't start none, won't be none. And my question would be... <laughs> I'm with Lizzie so, on this one. So if Charlotte <laughs> were to have Hopkins, who won an Oscar for playing, you know, a killer, a serial killer, a deranged serial killer in Silence of the Lambs, would he suggest that he played that role too well? Would he suggest that mm, maybe Anthony Hopkins really is Hannibal Lecter? Like, come on. He... he specifically targets black folks and tries to get a reaction out of them so yeah i i i'm not yeah. i'm not here for shopping tears. i'm not here for shopping tears at all i think it's disgusting yeah. because again if you haven't seen judas and the black messiah um a lot of good acting it is a lot it of good acting off the board mm -hmm. and it tells a very important story um, and so never once did I, you know, while I was watching the movie, what was I like, oh, well, I don't know about Lakeith. He playing this a little bit too well over there. Like, what? <laughs> Kaluuya no. made a good point. He, he Kaluuya, when he, he responded, because he wasn't trying to have any of it from, uh, <laughs> from Charlemagne, he said that um, it was great because Lakeith Stanfield made the sacrifice to play someone like a Judas. You know, because it does have an effect on his, uh, you know, how people view him as not just an actor, but as a person when you play a role like that. Yeah. And he played a pretty good role. So, I, I, you know, <laughs> Kaluuya really put him in his place. Daniel Kaluuya put, <laughs> put him in his place. It was actually, actually good to hear. So if you ever get a chance, uh, you know, check out that, uh, that interview. Cause, uh, 
it did retaliate well. But definitely check out the movie for sure. Definitely check out, check out the movie. It's, it's a very good movie, very well done, very well acted, very well directed and produced. And again, as we are in Black History Month, it's a part of our history. Yep. It's a part of our history. So it's a very important story. Yep. All right, now we've gotten the shenanigans out the way. It's time to get some truth behind the history with our guest spotlight on Black History. Today's spotlight is on Carlotta Walls Lanier of the Little Rock Nine. There she is. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Hey, Ms. Lanier, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. How are you? How are you? How are you feeling? I'm doing well. Good. Good. I'm doing well. <laughs> Woke up to a beautiful scene this morning. Uh, snow on, nice. on all the trees leaves and bushes it was actually gorgeous but it's yeah. about 50 degrees now so <laughs> so for those of you who don't know Carlotta is in Denver Colorado ah, so um, she has, you know, the mountain view in the backdrop if you will snow-capped mountains um, but right. before we get to um, our discussion with Carlotta let me just give you all a brief bio and intro as to who our icon is today so Carlotta Near. At the time, Carlotta Walls, at age 14, was the youngest of the Little Rock Nine, which was a group of nine African-American students who integrated Little Rock Central High School in 1957. The integration of the Arkansas High School was a catalyzing event in the American Civil Rights Movement, testing the landmark decision by the U.S. Supreme Court declaring segregation in public schools unconstitutional, and that would be Brown versus the Board of Education of Topeka, 1954. So after graduating from, from eventually graduating from Central High in 1960, Carlotta Walls Lanier studied at Michigan State University for two years before moving to Colorado. There, she enrolled at the University of Northern Colorado and earned her bachelor's degree in 1968. She, along with the other members of the Little Rock Nine, is the recipient of the nation's highest civilian honor, the Congressional Gold Medal, which was awarded by President Bill Clinton in 1999. The, she's also received the prestigious Spingarn Medal from the NAACP and the Lincoln Leadership Prize, which was awarded by the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library Foundation. She is also a recipient of four honorary doctorate degrees and is an inductee into the women's the women's Colorado Women's Hall of Fame. Wow. So everyone, let's please give a round of applause. What a wonderful guest. So before we get to the Q&A and we start to hear your story, is there anything you want to let our viewing audience or our guests know about you that I didn't well, mention in that bio? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the bio. Um, just a couple of uh, changes there. Um, I graduated from University of Northern Colorado, which was Colorado State College at the time. Uh, because that was back in, in the early uh, middle 60s. And um, I'm also uh, inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame, which I'm very proud of as well. Wow. It's right there, Seneca wow. Falls, New York. So um, uh, not that I did any of this at the age of 14 looking for those type of accolades, but um, anyway, they, they're welcomed. Now, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Very good. And well earned. Well earned. Yes. Well earned. Well, sir. yeah. You, yeah. Being, being the pioneer that you are, definitely well earned. Yeah. Definitely. So let's go to your actual story. So before we even get to 1957, set the tone for us in Little Rock before that. Like, what was Little Rock like for you um, before right. 1957? growing up, or even how you experienced education up until that point? Well, I went to, you know, it was Jim Crow South. And um, we, um, as uh, Negroes or coloreds, as we were called during those days, uh, you know, we sat in the back of the bus. We had to sit in the balcony of the theater. Uh, you could purchase your ticket with, uh, 
flights, but then you had to go around the side of the theater and go up rickety steps to the balcony of the theater. Uh, you could not use the public library. Um, you, you went to a library that was in a Kwanzaa hut uh, to, to check out books. Um, you could not go to a, the, the city park, um, <laughs> but only on a certain day of the week. Just the city the park. animals knew the difference. Right. So, you wow. know, it was, it, that, that was how uh, my childhood happened to be. And I went to a, a segregated school. Uh, uh, Stevens Elementary School and then to Dunbar Junior High School. And during that period of time, um, you know, I, I love school. I, I learned a lot in school. I had great teachers, uh, especially, um, well, in both, both instances, uh, as far as secondary schools were concerned. So, um, I mean, I had uh, African American uh, teachers that had master's degrees, um, and I give a lot of credit to them uh, for pairing us um, for the world, really, uh, mm -hmm. not knowing whether integration was going to take place in Little Rock anytime soon, but they were preparing us uh, to be able to go off to college and, um, and be a part of society no matter where you uh, might end up. So the thing happened to be is that um, we, we had a newspaper that um, was called the Weekly Reader. And um, I remember it so well. It was uh, a newspaper that was written strictly for kids. And, um, you know, we, we would read about who was now the new um, uh, Secretary of State or the, the, about presidents, about uh, uh, science uh, achievements throughout the country or throughout the world. Um, so I, I enjoyed all of that. Uh, yes, I knew that um, as, as far as being able to enjoy all of the things that was there in Little Rock, uh, I could not do that, uh, at least not on my own terms. But I did have parents who basically told me that, uh, and, and family members, that these things would change. And, uh, and you needed to be prepared uh, when that change takes place, whether uh, the door uh, opens with a crack or whether it's flung wide open. So th that, that's how I grew up. I, I lived on a street that was all uh, black. The next street over was all white. And in between, uh -huh. there was this this baseball this open field that we turned into a softball field and um so i played with white kids all summer long so you know this you, you just didn't go into each other's homes and you didn't socialize uh, uh as far as adults go and so forth but uh overall i had a a, a good upbringing i uh, had a close-knit family um I participated in a lot of extracurricular activities. Uh, I was part of the YWCA, the Y teams. Uh, my mother was a Girl Scout counselor, so we went to camp. And you know, those are the things that uh, uh, that helped make me who I am today. I, I give a lot of credit to my parents for having magazines and 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 the encyclopedia in our home. And with that, I was always, you know, traveling around the world through the magazine and the stories that I, I read. And I was just one of those kids that kind of like to touch and feel whatever I'm reading or, uh, you know, think about or what have you. So that, 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 was, that was what it was all about for me. We do have a quick question um, from our audience. Who, were you who did you look up to as a child at the time? I looked this up from to, Ernest Cooper. Um, yeah, I, it, I remember some family members I looked up to. Um, um, my grandfather's played a big role in my life. Um, we had what we called Negro History Week. Mm. So I was always thinking about, yes, it was just a week. And I, and, 
and and we dressed up uh you know to to be that person or what have you um and actually that's where i got that interest in wanting to be a doctor because of what i had learned about charles drew and 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 and, and i was and and the only female it was two females that that struck me um as far as history goes one was madame curie i mean that was the only woman who 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 stood out in the science field and uh -huh. and and then there was a black woman in the, in um, Little Rock who was a dentist. That was that was the only two that I knew that had gone down that path in the medical field. So I kind of wanted to be like that, okay? And then all the other things that took place. Uh, Rosa Parks was one of my heroes uh, for what she had done. But prior to that, you know, I'm learning about all of the the uh, things that uh, people like me had done before me. Okay, that helped make this country what it is today. Because Rosa and Parks was, was like two it. years before you, right? Rosa Parks was about two years before the Little Rock. Yes, yeah, she was two years before, right? And uh, so those sort of things just stood out, you know, as you read in magazines and you would see on that black and white television. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, uh, the, the, those are the things that kind of helped shape me as far as that goes. And I so had a lot of people helping shape me. <laughs> what is it? To attend Central, like how did that, come about in your household with your parents with your peers okay well it you know that happened in 1954 as far as brown versus board of education and i knew what it meant we discussed it in our classroom it was a part of that okay. weekly reader that we received so okay. we discussed it it was discussed in my home um, everyone, my mother and father were proud of the fact of this Supreme Court decision and, and mm -hmm. what it could mean. We talked about it at the YWCA. We talked about it in my church. So every, it was a buzz throughout the city, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought, surely, that was in May of 1954. So, and I'm playing softball with kids out there in the, the field, right? And I thought, sure, come September, that we would all be going to the nearest school. And that didn't happen. Uh, mm. The school board did say that they would abide by the Supreme Court decision. And, but they needed to put a plan in place. And unfortunately, that plan took from 1954 to 1957. Mm. So during that period of time, I went on to my uh, black uh, junior high school, which was a junior high in high school, and um, did extremely well there. And um, it was in my ninth grade year that um, my homeroom teacher came in and um, he had picked up the bulletin that had been Xeroxed off in the office and walked in and, and read the bulletin for the day. And halfway down, he said, any of you and he gave, that live, and he gave uh, street boundaries, and have any intentions of going to Central High School in the fall, please sign this sheet of paper. And he put it on the first desk. It went around the room. It got to me. I signed the sheet of paper. Nice. Didn't think, and he was not recruiting. I want you to understand that. He was reading a bulletin. Okay. So, right. Uh, right. Well, this was a decision. It, it was a just I, I knew that this was my time to you know hey i pass this school every day why shouldn't i go to school there and i had a right to go there right. see and that 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 was a part of my foundation mm -hmm. of doing what was right and that that i learned at home so i didn't even mention it to my parents when i got home oh, I mean, really it was just <laughs> no, they did <laughs> They, they didn't know until I received the registration card in, in, in <laughs> July. So, so what did they say? Uh, yeah, what they say, yeah. <laughs> you plan to go to Central in the fall? Yes. You know, and I, 
could, I could see some pride in my, my parents' eyes, really, that I had yes. made this decision without their extra input. You know, their input from cradle on had been to uh, uh, ex be exposed to all the good things in life, if mm -hmm. possible, to, and, and be uh, to get the act to you wanted access to to a better education and you wanted all of the education you possibly could get. So, you know, that was just something that was just a part of our family. Um, you know, I my my father had been in World War Two. Um, he he went to <laughs> he, so you know he had um, uh, he was working during the day and going to uh, junior college at night, and it it just it got a little tough for him trying to handle the family and so forth. My mother was trying to complete her degree at Philander Smith College, and today she's still a semester away from that. <laughs> so for me to want to know, to, to you know, uh, to, to have the best available, to be able to choose wherever I wanted to go, I, I mean, that it, it made sense. I, I, I didn't see anything wrong with it. <laughs> right. I just wanna real quickly, I wanna read off some of the comments online. So Vaughn Perry uh, quoted you, I had a right to go there. Olivia, right. uh, Olivia East says, wow, such a courageous decision from a child. Uh, Daria Winter said, um, oh, I'll get back to Daria Winter. So Vaughn Perry says, did you realize at the time how big a transformational, transformational moment this was going to be at the time? No, I did not. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. And, and again, it goes back to knowing you're within the law, okay, and you know that you had a right to be there. Mm -hmm. So those things piled together, um, you know, um, no, I, I didn't think this was going to be any big deal. I did feel that there were going to be people who didn't want this to happen, right? Uh, because I was reading that in the paper and so forth. But I also felt that there was uh, a community there that after a while would step back and, mm -hmm. and, and allow those things to take place. They would voice their opinion in a negative way. But in the long run, this being the capital of the state of Arkansas, um, it, it it had a different vibe, if you understand what I'm saying. And see, there are pictures there. Yes, I saw those sort of things, but I thought it was it would all go away uh, after a couple of weeks once they got to to uh, know us. So, um, you know, I was not looking for anyone um, to love me. Mm -hmm. You know, I I was going to school yeah. to to get a good education. And um, I, I, you know, uh, some thought that, you know, sitting next to a white person was going to just send a buzz through me. I, I don't get a buzz sitting next to a white person. All I wanted was the same thing <laughs> they were getting. So, <laughs> September 3rd, September 3rd, 1957, that was the day before the nine, right. and we'll introduce the nine in a moment, but the day before your first attempt to get into Central High School, did you get any some night? Like what was going on in the Walls household on September 3rd? Well, it was excitement. I was going to, to my new high school, okay? Mm. It was not so much the new white high school, it was my new high school. And it, during those days, high school was 10th, 11th, and 12th. So, you know, I was in the 10th grade. And um, I had this, this new dress. My mother was a great seamstress. And however, her uncle, who was my great uncle, had stopped by the house a week or so before and said he wanted me to have a store-bought dress, okay? <laughs> so my mother and I... Dress. <laughs> <laughs> right. So 
you know, we went downtown and we picked up this dress. Uh, you know, we I picked out this dress, and that is the dress that I wore. That in fact, two first days, to be honest with you, and that is the dress that you now see. <laughs> that you now uh, is is there at the National uh, Museum of African American History and Culture, and um, I don't know why my mother was um, so had such foresight to to keep that dress. I found it, you know, probably. Uh, uh, 30 years later in her cedar chest and wow. um, and I said wow you, you you kept this and she said yes I did you know wow. so you can take wow. it so and that's History. that's what happened that's what mamas so, do um, mamas mamas no 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 special events and special things they they keep that historical <laughs> stuff they know they do they that's know true. you're absolutely correct so um that that's how that piece took place, but the night before, I was just excited about going to school the next day. Um, my mother dropped me off at the drop-off point, and I walked that block. I saw the other kids at the other end of the block, and there were a number of ministers there. It was a mixed group of ministers. And um, uh, it's funny, I, I expected more than the nine, that showed up that day, I will say that much, uh, because 39 of us had sat before the, the superintendent of schools and heard the litany of things that we could and could not do. So um, wow. once I got there's, there, there's yeah, that dress. So, <laughs> that, so 30 of them dropped out. <laughs> wow, oh, that's so cool. crazy. It wasn't initially supposed to be wow. just the nine. There was like oh no, more than it, it, it was thirty. It was actually one hundred and forty-seven kids lived in that the, the, the boundaries, okay. the school boundaries. Okay, and one hundred and fourteen signed up, but thirty-nine of us evidently was selected by some group. Okay, whether it was the uh, through. The Little Rock School Board and I was ask possibly that, how you the NAACP. Um, you know, I, I call it the Jackie Robinson test. I, I, I think they probably looked at our, our grades and our, what we did in the community and whether we were, you know, might not be, uh, uh, you know, the greatest in everything, but we were the best available. That they at that thirty nine were the best out of the hundred. That's what I was wondering. And, okay. Uh, Seventeen, wow. whatever the criteria that they were using. Okay, and but so you don't know the criteria. On... No, I don't. Okay. And th this and is so just my thought. On September fourth, from right. that number, nine showed up. No, actually, ten showed up. Okay. It was 10 of us there on the first day, not all together, but it was 10 that showed up and the 10th one never came back. Okay. Wow. Uh, well, let's, as, 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 so interesting. Yeah. let's just introduce the audience to the nine, like who the nine are. Sure. So we have right. Ernest Green. And so we're talking about, you know, who they were as teenagers in 1957. So Ernest Green, Elizabeth Eckford, right. mm -hmm. Jefferson Thomas, Terrence Roberts, mm -hmm. Minnie mm -hmm. Jean Brown, Gloria mm -hmm. Ray, Thelma right. Mothershed. Now help me mm -hmm. with Melba's last name because you know my I, I speak with the Spanish accent sometimes. So I want to say Patillo, but I gather it's probably not pronounced that way. It is Patillo. 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 Patillo is how she, yeah, it's how she pronounced it. Yes. So, so Melba <laughs> Patillo, and then obviously, you know, Carlotta Walls. So right. take us to take us to first day, September fourth. That that September fourth, as I said, I was dropped off. My mother dropped me off. She she didn't have any anxiety about it, and neither did I. I was excited. And uh, well, this was not the day right there, but anyway, uh, we <laughs> we got to the 
corner and um, we, there was a prayer given by the, the ministers that, that was with us. Uh, and we then walked across the street. I saw the, the uh, National Guard that was there that the governor had said the night before on television that he was calling them out to protect the citizens of Little Rock. And Not um, you. Because, the citizens of Little Rock. so th that's the day right there. And um, the, I, I was a, surely considered myself a citizen. My father paid taxes just like everyone else. So right. it, that, didn't, that didn't bother me. You know, hearing that, um, I thought that the National Guard was there to, uh, you know, protect us if there was going to be any problems. And uh, we get there and this, uh, commanding officer came up and pretty much spoke to the one of the white ministers and said, take these kids and, and, and take them back home. And the Ernie made the comment, you're telling us we can't go to the school mm -hmm. and uh, we can't go up this sidewalk. And again, he spoke to the white person and, and said, they are not allowed to go into the school per the governor's uh, orders. So we turned around and um, we were uh, escorted back home by with the with by the ministers actually. So in that so moment, that's what started you, the whole process. And in that moment, did you know? Okay, this is about to be a thing. This is about to well, be a I, thing. You know. Yeah, I saw the mob across the street. I heard the name calling, but none of that bothered me. Uh, I knew that there were going to be people, you know, that, that were going to act that way. But I also thought that the... Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, that, that was September 23rd. But anyway, um, I, I knew that this was going to happen. Uh, I mean, that the... The, the mob was going to, it, it, it started growing. The mob was not right. like that, that you just showed, okay? Uh, but there was a, a large group of people there, probably a good hundred, okay? And, uh, but it grew from day, uh, from that day forward is what happened. Um, and by September 23rd, um, it was over a thousand people out there, uh, uh, you know, uh, calling names, saying everything that they could think of. And uh, parents wanting their kids to come out of the school, uh, especially when they found out that we had gotten in on September 23rd. And uh, it was only, by that time, only 17 policemen were surrounding the school because of uh, the governor had pulled away the National Guard. Uh, he had pretty much lied to the President of the United States when he went to Newport News, uh, Rhode Island, not Newport News, but Newport, Rhode Island, where uh, the president was. So, um, you said, and, and are we talking about Governor, uh, we're calling about Faubus? I will not force my people to integrate against their will. Yeah, yeah. he's... So, and, and let, I, you know... Let me, let me just reiterate, like, these are teenagers. These, I mean, Carlotta, Ms. Ms. Here was 14 at the time. We're talking about 14, 15, 16 year olds. These are children who are right. meeting all this push, pushback and vitriol for simply trying to go to school, have their first day of high school. So I think that's something that, you know, the viewing audience needs to keep into perspective. You know, you guys were right. you know, here taking, you know, a, a nationwide um, pro making a protest, at least not in your mind, it wasn't a protest. In your mind, it was, let me go to school. And so Neo is currently showing exactly. a video of Elizabeth Eckford, who, so you all were at the school trying to get in, but she got separated from, she didn't get with the main group on that first day. And so right. as she, she was trying to go to school, yeah. she was alone and was met by an angry white mob. And this is one of the most iconic pictures from Picture. that time of her walking in was she 15 at the time she was 15 she at was the time a, right at the time walking to school she, by she herself. was a junior yeah 
an right. angry mob of adults are following right. her, yelling, screaming, wow. throwing things. Getting so my it. question, um, when you finally met up with Elizabeth, what did she say mm -hmm. about that moment? Mm -hmm. you, you know, it was like a couple of days later um, before actually that I saw Elizabeth. And um, who was a very quiet person to start with and, um, and, and inward, you know, uh, about her feelings and so forth. So she didn't really say a whole lot other than um, she was thankful for, for Grace, uh, uh, boy, I can't think of her last name now, that helped her to get on the bus. Uh, to go home because that crowd was standing around her. There were a number Amazing. of uh, Child. reporters there, especially the one from New, uh, from the New York Times, uh, who was really trying to uh, wow. help her. And um, because he had three daughters at home, he said, and we got to meet him. Benjamin Fine was his day. So, um, you know, it... Um, it stayed with her for probably about 40 years. Um, th wow. This whole process, we all of us um, handled it differently. But for uh -huh. Elizabeth, um, she really did not get help uh, until about 40 years later. Mm -hmm. And um, and now to she was struggling she with it that far, that long. Wow. Yeah, she wow. and and you know it it, it was. It was pretty devastating. Um, Imagine. You know, each person just, you know, it's nine of us with nine different stories, uh, none greater or lesser than the other. And um, right. so, and, and, and hers is, is, is special as well. I've got some comments online real quick. So Jacqueline Robin says, that clip is devastating to watch. Daria Winter wants to know, how did it not bother you? Call it a mob. The mob we just saw at the Capitol was frightening to members of Congress who were not even little children facing a mob. And Fred Hargrove also asked, how did you stay strong? Wikipedia says you never cried or retaliated. No. Well, we, you know, we couldn't retaliate. That was one of those, that list of things that we heard from the superintendent of schools. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> uh, and, and my retaliation was always different. I, it has never been physical. Okay, um, it, it, it was, a, you know, I, I refused to stoop to their level. Mm -hmm. That was another thing that I learned at home. And um, I decided that it was their problem and not mine, okay, because I knew I was right and I knew I had the law on my side. So it, knowing those sort of things that, you are doing the right thing. Help me to get through that, along with my faith, as far as that goes. I mean, I had support from my uh, uh, church there, uh, family members uh, uh, supported me. Uh, people from all over the world sent letters to us. Uh, I have letters from people from everywhere, uh, Africa, from Denmark, uh, uh, from Germany, wherever. Um, so all of these things that, you know, this was the beginning of, of, of news on television, you know, the, uh, showing these sort of things on television. Right. And during those days, you had 15 minutes of, of national news and 15 minutes of local news. And we were on the news every day. So, you know, today you, you get news 24 seven, but it, during those days, you only had 15 minutes of national news. So just imagine wow. that being transported wow. throughout the world um, and, and being read about and, and, and seen in clips in magazines and so forth by people in other countries. So, you know, the president of the United States had, had a, a problem on his hand because, you know, this really did, this was like states rights against federal law. Is what it really, you know, was the problem there. Okay, and um, 
initially he really didn't want, you know, one of the nine, you know, gives a lot of credit to the pres President Eisenhower for sending in the 101st Airborne. My feeling was, what took you so long? But anyway, you know, we all have, have, have a different feeling about this. So I have a quick I, clip I of uh, like of Dwight Eisenhower he had to show, you yeah. know, that he was president of the United States and he believed in the Constitution and then he, he stepped up to that. Unfortunately, these past four years, we didn't have that. But anyway, let me just show this real quick. <laughs> An extreme situation has been created in Little Rock. This challenge must be met. And with such measures as will preserve to the people as a whole their lawfully protected rights in a climate permitting their free and fair exercise. In the present case, the troops are there pursuant to law solely for the purpose of preventing interference with the orders of the court. Such an extreme situation. Yeah, and so you're saying he took too long. <laughs> Well, that was my feeling because, you know, growing up, you, you, you always heard, you know, you, you need to get your education, you need to go to college, and, and then you get out there to get a job, but understand that you're going to have to be twice as good, if not three times yep. as good as that white yep. person, right? Mm -hmm. So here I am, I felt I could compete with anyone given the same start time and the same finish time, right? Well, we couldn't go to school. September 4th, we were turned around. September 23rd, when we tried to get in, we were in there for about two hours and then had to be rushed out. And then finally, September 25th. So all during that time, litigation was taking place in the federal courts. And we were in school we weren't in class so it was only that last and i'm thinking we're getting further and further behind and that was bothering me because i really did feel that um you know i could compete if 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 everything was a level playing field cool. but mm -hmm. it you know it was not level because i was not in school <laughs> so um, I Really, really quick. But once I got in there, I found out, you know, I was, I, I could do. Vaughn Perry, one of our um, viewers, had a question. So while this was going on, what was the response from the Black community okay. in Little Rock? It's a good question. It's a good question. Um, generally speaking, uh, supportive, but there was a, a group of, of um, various black people who would sidle up to one of us and say, don't you think you need to go back to your black high school that's, you know, to go, go to Harz Man because it's causing havoc for us. We, we're having a hard time with our jobs. Um, you know, my wife lost her job or, um, you know, it, it was very difficult uh, for all, um, including the parents of the nine. I mean, uh, my father lost his job every time they'd find out that um, he was the father of one of those going to Central. Um, but the the church was very supportive, um, and a num and you know that was dissension within families too. Um, I, I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine some family members, including in mine. I had a couple there that always wanted and was always saying to my mother you need to bring her home it is it, she shouldn't be up there and one was the librarian of the black high school and i couldn't <laughs> understand that that was wow. you know and I, I worked in the library there when i was in junior high school and she was not you know she was wanting my mother to bring me home but as I got older, I understood that, you know, she feared for my safety is what it really boiled down to. Protection. Right. So, yeah. um, but, but as a 14 year old now, and all the things that you have taught me up until that time, and then now you're saying I shouldn't do this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it was confusing to me there when it was family members who, who didn't want, um, 
you know, was giving us a little problem within the family. All right, I want to get to the. Uh, but yes, the, uh, it, other, it happened. <laughs> I want to get to our other panel members, but I do want to just point out some comments online real quick. Uh, Myla said, um, your, retali your retaliation was not letting them take your rights away as a human being to go to school and graduating. Kadish Franklin says, Tony Morrison said, I always knew we had the high moral ground. I knew we were always superior morally. So let me just say, Carlotta, <laughs> let me just say, Carlotta, uh, Kadish is from Little Rock. Um, he's oh. from Little Rock, Oxford. Yes, he's from Little Rock. So he has a oh. special interest in your appearance I here. <laughs> All right, Robbie Rock, <laughs> I want to get to one of your questions, Robbie. Two part question. Um, how has your life experience altered your perception of the events of Little Rock uh, as you went through it? And in your opinion, how has American society changed or stayed the same? And I just want to point out Robbie Rock is from Canada. So, Robbie different Rock perspective. Is from Canada, yes. yes. <laughs> so, yes, you, but the, the uh, Ontario curriculum didn't have a whole lot to present about you. So this was a wonderful week to learn a lot about your story. And this has just been well, wonderful. a wonderful experience. Yes. Um, in fact, the first documentary that was done uh, uh, on me was was from someone in Canada. Uh, oh, wow. Which was <laughs> Nice yeah. Canada. Canada does Canada. do something right. <laughs> right. <laughs> But uh, let's see, uh, um, the question again, I'm Repeat sorry. the question, Robbie. So, sorry, how your life experience has altered your perception of the events that took place in Little Rock, and if you feel that American society has progressed or stayed the same? You mean as she got older, okay. Well, it, <laughs> there's been a lot of progress. I'm gonna at least answer that uh, for you. And unfortunately, we have not uh, stayed vigilant enough um, to um, for these things not to happen again because they are happening all over again. And um, as Americans, we need to, to uh, realize that these gifts that we have uh, accomplished and, and things that we have done over the years to make things better for us and for all people are, are, are gradually being uh, taken away. And we need to stand up to those sort of things um, and, and make sure that we hold on to them. Uh, a lot of times uh, the various laws that have been passed, true enough, have not been complete in, for, for everyone, uh, but you don't, just throw that law out. You, mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Bath you, <laughs> you, you know, you, you, you make it a little bit better and uh, you, you amend these laws and so forth. So, um, because it takes too long to even get to that place. I mean, it, it take voters rights laws. I mean, it, we need that. And now we having these suppression laws uh, in, in, in voting, uh, people wanting to change that law. So we need to stand up to those sort of things and, and, and recognize that your vote does count. And so I, I just see those, you know, I see a lot of progress. I really do. I mean, yeah. uh, since 1954 to today, um, we, we have gained a great deal in this country. And but, but people need to understand that we all have to give to make this country what it is today. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, there's a, 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 a group that is growing that needs to be re-educated. These are ignorant people. They, they do not know the history of this country, period. Mm -hmm. And they need to know mm -hmm. it. I get frustrated with okay. seeing the American flags thrown around because it was the same thing back in your day where American flags were being used by people who were, uh, you know, I don't want to say white supremacist, but I don't know what you refer to them as in your day. Obviously, that's what we refer to them now. But right. American flag, well, you know, it starts to look bad to you. 
And well, the, you know, I, I saw that Confederate flag as a kid along with the American flag, okay, our flag. And yes, here you have a picture here that this group of people are using the American flag. And at that time, I think it was 48 stars on the flag. So, you know, um, this is, um, it, it's, it's very unfortunate that there's, there's this group, um, and see, they were Ku Klux Klan as I was growing up. That, mm -hmm. That's Ku Klux Klan, right. who we, you know, yep. white Referred supremacy to. was the word, uh, words that were used in the Ku Klux Klan. Okay. Yep. Nowadays, yep. there's all these other groups that are out there, but they're all the same as far as I'm concerned. Yep. Um, you know, someone had made the comment, um, I think it was President Clinton, that, you know, it, which took me back to thoughts that we had uh, among black people about crabs in a bucket, you know? Yeah. And his statement was that, you know, there are people who always uh, want to bring the person ahead of, ahead of him down. They're always wanting to pull them down. In the black community, we always called it crabs in a bucket. You know, mm -hmm. yep, I know. Always, I heard, heard it yeah. often. So, you know, that that's that is what is happening because they do think that we have too much. Well, they can have the same if they work at it and and accept other people uh, as a human being. We're all human beings and we, we should all enjoy um, the liberties of this country. So I have a quick question about before we get to, you know, the other panels, just going back to being in Central, once you guys got in and there still was a lot of pushback from your fellow students and classmates, right. what about the teachers? How did the teachers, the teachers, yeah, how did the teachers treat you or respond to you? Okay, um, like society, we, there was a group of teachers that were, were, were helpful. There was a group that looked the other way, the care less, you know. Um, and then I, I discovered who a part of that group was who was making it difficult for us. One of them was uh. my chemistry teacher. But, but let me just give you, hopefully it's a quick story. Um, I had a um, Spanish teacher who did not want me there. And she should have mm. retired before I got there. And she did retire <laughs> that I could. Uh, and that, but my best teacher was my biology teacher. And he had graduated from Central. He had gone to the uh, University of Arkansas. He was a part of the ROTC. He went to the Korean War. He came back to Little Rock to, um, uh, teach at his alma mater, and he was the one who encouraged me to be in science fairs. He encouraged, he watched over me in the auditorium. Uh, I knew that, I, he never said anything um, in addition to being a disciplined teacher. Uh, you know, he, he didn't say I'm looking after you or anything of that nature, but he did. And I knew that. I felt that he was, he, he knew that this was the right thing going on. Now, I know he loved his mother. And he grew up at his mother's table. So I, my guess is, is that he took the good from his mother and left the bad behind because, you know, it was, it, it was really that she was on one side and he was on the other. Mm -hmm. So, wow. you know, that, and, and I think a lot of it has to do with being exposed and, and, and that's being educated. Okay. You, you've got to learn about other people. You, you have to uh, I agree. take the time to understand that we all want the same things in life. We really do. Okay. And we should all yeah. have that same opportunity to do that. And all we were asking for is the, the same access, okay. that best, yeah. the access to the best education available. I just want to say, I want to get to Gianni Storm next, but I just want to say mm -hmm. that I don't know 
that had you not stood up the way you did, that we would have the access to what we have now. So I personally appreciate you choosing to take that stand. You and the nine choosing to take that stand. At, at 14, four at 14. I mean, I, at 14, and, and I was right. just, I was thinking about basketball and, and, and you know. I was, right. thinking about I was thinking about Gucci and MCM bags at 14. So <laughs> <laughs> Gianni, you know what you, Gianni, what were you thinking about at 14? That wasn't too long ago. What were you thinking about at 14? At 14, <laughs> at 14, I had just moved from like two high schools. So I was thinking about settling down and just finding new friends and sticking with them. All right. So what's your right. question, Gianni? <laughs> um, Ms. Lanier, my question is, given all of the racial uproar, such as the um, Capitol riots and George Floyd, what are your, I know it's a lot, but what is your kind of take yeah. on the progression that we've come to, like where we're at now? Well, I, I, you know, it hurt me so much to see what was taking place with George Floyd. Um, that, that did take place. Um, it, it, it was the, the next level in a kill as far as I was concerned. That's where wow. it took me. Wow. Okay. And, All and, right. and prior to that was the Trayvon Martin. Um, yeah. Uh, right. Martin. That, that really, I was thinking that the kids I was speaking to then was going to take Trayvon Martin to be their Emmett Till, okay? But then George Floyd is really the one, okay? Mm -hmm. Because there it was being televised the whole nine yards. But what was, what warmed my heart was the fact that throughout the world demonstrations took place. It was not just here. Demonstrations yeah. took place in other parts of this this world, and it was the the demonstrations here in the United States was was diverse. So that said to me that 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 is this humanity that we need to think about, we need to uphold and and stand up against these sort of things that are taking place. Now, I think Black Lives Matter pretty much came out of the Trayvon Martin situation, yeah. I think. And, mm -hmm. and with that, um, the, uh, uh, you know, it has grown. And, but I did have flashbacks on January 6th. I'm gonna be mm -hmm. honest with you, I really did. I bet. So, uh -huh. and to see those, once the, the um, National Guard was there on the floor of the Capitol. I mean, bivouac inside the Capitol. They were bivouacked on my campus wow. uh, at, at Little Rock Central High School. So I'm seeing some of the same sort of things that are taking place. And what was really disheartening is to see the flags being used the way they were being used and the yes. Confederate flag in the Capitol. I mean, Thank you. That, that did that it for me. Strong. That did it for me. That and then for these that, um, it, 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 you know, uh, legislators not to do what is right. I don't know. R-I-G-H-T does not mean anything to them. Yeah. There's no, no I agree with no you ethic. Now, when I saw the image of the protester, um, very brazenly, you know, carrying the Confederate flag through the Capitol. And the Capitol, again, I'm in, I'm in Washington, D.C., folks. Um, the Capitol, I can see the Capitol from my, my view behind me. The Capitol is a 15, 20 minute walk from my apartment. Um, despite what you heard, black folks are very patriotic. You know, we yeah. like the country that we live in, even though it has a lot of flaws. This is my country. This is where I was born. This is where I live. Right. And so to see that young man in the Capitol brandishing the Confederate flag, I was just so offended and hurt. Like I, I just never yeah. thought Same here. that we would be at this point. 
Well, I feel the yeah. same way. I, I'm noticing something on my computer here. My battery is getting low, so I'm just, I want to just forewarn okay. you. I might have to end up <laughs> wrapping up. Okay. Get back on. <laughs> So let me just wrap up with just going to senior year, February yes. 1960. You, you're, I read in your book that you said at that time things had died down a little bit. You were excited about graduating. And then Correct. what happened? Unfortunately, on February 9th, um, around 10 o'clock, um, my home was bombed uh, oh. with my mother and my two sisters there. Uh, my father, uh, as I said before, had problems getting work, so he was working at his his father's uh, uh, cafe, um, and it unfortunately my neighbor who lived up the street was uh, after two weeks of investigation, they decided that he was uh, a part of. Uh, planting the bomb, mm. and uh, which we knew he hadn't. My father had been picked up and had been interrogated, uh, and after 72 hours, they um, released him. Um, they wow. they beat a, a a a they beat a confession out of no. my friend Herbert Montz, and I'm sure that they tried to beat one, and I know they did. Um, attempted, you know, they were had, had beaten my father as well. Mm. But this was a 16 year older that was sentenced to five years uh, of bombing my home, which I know he never, he did not do. Oh, uh, my father was never wow. um, indicted, but my father's friend was indicted and, uh, but was never sentenced. So it, it was, they were, it, Herbert was railroad. It, that's all it boiled down to. Uh, later, um, probably about four or five years ago, uh, I was told um, a neighbor did uh, see this car with these two white men in it wow. who had put the bomb there. Who And so, you know, and he told his father, okay, and his father told him, we can't get involved in this. And this was a black neighbor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, wow. so many different people suffer in different ways uh, because of the times, okay? Very true. And I cannot hold uh, anyone um, uh, pretty much responsible other than the fact that if those two can sleep at night, if they're still living, um, well, okay, I, I, you know, all I needed to do was to go back to school that next day because I needed to let this, whoever it was, know that you have not won. I mean, those that thoughts as a 14-year-old, amazing. Yeah. So now, so, I think she was 17 now, but even still, as a teenager, that that's yeah. very um, noble of you. It's very courageous. It's It's... You know, I think of myself well, again at 17, you know, I probably would have been in the streets trying to fight somebody. Like, I know. it just... But it, that was because of... It. But Elizabeth, I needed that diploma. And that's yeah. why I was going back. And, you know, I needed this diploma to to vindicate and, and, and all the time that I had spent there, okay? I needed that to to... Uh, and, and this too is at the National um, Museum of African American History and Culture that I gave to them. Uh, and it means a lot to me because uh, it was a commitment I made in the 10th, from the 10th grade uh, and I graduated and I am the only female of the Little Rock Nine that participated in graduation exercise. Oh, so wow. I feel I good about that. it, I really do. Wow. So, uh, so that, you're the that, only that, one who received the diploma that, of the Little Rock Nine? I mean, only female? Only female? Yeah. I'm the only female that participated in graduation That's... exercise. Oh, I see. Oh, no, did no, we lose I her? I think we did lose her. Well, let's oh, give her a chance no. to come back. Maybe she'll still come back. Let's... 
give it back, but let's see some of the comments that we, if we can. Yeah, um, let's get, let's get to those. Oh, you want me to read? I thought you were reading stuff. Uh, um, <laughs> I, was, I was trying to um, resolve an issue. Go ahead. So, no, so, so yeah, we kind of butchered her name earlier, but, you know, our good friend, Me Lee, she says, thank you, Carlotta, for your sacrifice and everything you have done and continue to do. Your strength and perseverance to be treated the same as everyone has made an impact on all of us. Great show, everyone, especially Carlotta and Elizabeth. Oh, thank you. Um, She's back. Um, and my back. Okay, I'm sorry. No, don't worry. No problem. We're happy to have you back. So, Carlotta, I don't know if you remember our friend from college, Me Lee, but I was just John Lee's sister. So I was just reading a comment from her. And so she was thanking you for your perseverance and dedication and how it's been inspiring. So, Well, I, well thank you. I guess I do remember the, the brother-sister combo there at University of Colorado. They <laughs> the brother-sister combo. <laughs> they were, they're like the Wonder Twins. Even though they weren't twins, they were like the Wonder Twins. <laughs> right. <laughs> I do want to get. I do want to get to Robbie, Rock, and Gianni for at least one more question. So let's see if we can get that in now. That since since uh, Ms. Lanier is back. So Robbie, did you have a second question? Well, I, um, everything that happened to Little Rock was. Pretty crazy. Um, I know that Orville Faubus uh, in 1958 opted to close Arkansas public high schools rather than align with the integration uh, laws. So, what did it mean to you when Arkansas finally fell in line in 1972? Um, it, you know, the the video came up. Uh, he closed that. the schools in '58, and and litigation place for a year now what and and finally the schools reopened in 59 at the the year 59 60 and that's when i went back um, yes but I, I my question was more it as far as little rock arkansas schools did not or pub, little rock arkansas public schools did not become fully integrated until 1972 oh, yeah. So uh -huh. that was quite a while. And so it, what was your impression? Because this was like a lifetime way ago, because you were a 14 year old girl when all this started. I, I agree. I think at that time, um, uh, one of the nine, Terrence Roberts was a counselor, uh, was a, a consultant for the Little Rock School Board uh, during those days. Uh, let me say this, Rob. I graduated May 30th, 1960. And I caught the first thing smoking out of Little Rock the next day. <laughs> <laughs> and I really had no intention of going back to Little Rock. All, and it, it took me six years to go back. Wow. And since, but since then, I have been back many times, okay? And I do know that they probably did have problems. I, I, I didn't even want to hear about what was happening in Little Rock. It, it took me 30 years to even talk about this time in my life, mm -hmm. okay? So wow. um, um, you're telling me something, you're giving me a year that I didn't know. I didn't know it was 1972 that it was finally in integrated uh, wow. throughout the, the school system. Um, uh, unfortunately, and, and you know, it had a lot to do with a lot of pushback, I'm sure, from from various groups there in in Little Rock, um, and different school um, uh, board members. Um, so, you know, it, it it speaks to whatever the the community, the 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 push that's going on, or the lack of push going on in trying to make it equal for all kids. Education is so key and and we all need it. Black, white, yellow, green, whatever. Yes. Um, we all need to be educated. And you know, it's, it's so unfortunate that we, that is not the one, number one, it was number one as I was growing up. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. you, everyone wanted that education, education. okay? And, we wanted to be number one in the world, and, and we were. 
up until recently, it, it, mm -hmm. as far as graduating from high school and graduating from college, mm -hmm. uh, uh, some statistic that I saw about three years ago, we were like number 16 in the world as far as graduating. Wow. Hey, you know, and that's not good, folks. Hey, no, you know, not, <laughs> not at and, all. And, and and that comes down to core right. value, what you, how you feel about yourself, about what you want to do in this world. You need this education. You need to be educated. So, yes. you know, I'm not saying that you've got to be some professional, uh, such as a lawyer or a doctor or uh, those sort of things, but you, you you need to be certified in something. You need to understand that this and have some um, be passionate about whatever it is that you are interested in, and and work that passion. Mm -hmm. That's how I see. It. You know, uh, it, and then it's not a job. It you know this is something that you enjoy doing, but you need to to have something behind you that says that that you're able to get this type of work done, whatever it is. All right, Johnny, last question from the panel. Let's hear it. Um, yeah, do you have any, um, well, that was sort of advice, but do you have any last words or advice for young activists that are, um, I guess, trying to become more equal or just to abolish racism in general in the U.S.? Well, because we have that know, new movement. We have a, a new movement now, so. <laughs> yeah, Black Lives Matter and all that. Yeah, well, which has been going on for about 10 years or so. You know, I, I still say that you really need to know who you are and, and whose you are and, know, and, and be centered. Once you, you have, have that, you can do almost anything you want to in this world today. Um, and, and be, and be, find your passion. I, I, I still say that you, you need to find your passion and work it. Okay. To your advantage. Um, and, 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 and be involved in things that you find important. Look at those okay. kids in, in Florida at Parkland. Gun control uh -huh. is there big thing, right? And they are expressing their opinion. And young right. people need to understand that they have a voice. And mm -hmm. with that voice, change can take place. That voice into action and, and change will take place. And you know, I think it was Frederick yeah. Douglass who said, without struggle, there's no progress. So folks, just you, you have to realize you still have to struggle and work towards something better. So uh, before you Thank go, you. I mean, I, I'm going to give you a minute for some last words, but I want to go through these comments that are online. There's a ton of comments thanking you. So uh, we have D'Angelo, uh, well, we have uh, Valerie Warren Bird, a true hero, she calls you. Oh. Kadish, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> they're just jumping around. Uh, so many comments coming up. Um, <laughs> Valerie Warren Bird says, love the show. Uh, Vaughn Perry says, she was amazing. Thank you for inviting her. Uh, Ruben Gorn is asking to have a part two to have you back. <laughs> um, uh, Joy Birdsong, so much to take away from this episode. Um, Randy Carr says, yes, we seem to have surrounded ourselves with stuff that makes our lives so easy that we come, become lazy in the process. Daria Winter says, we must be centered must know what it is to be centered. Absolutely, that is the recommendation I give to my students daily. Find your passion. Um, Jose Holt says, uh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, Paulette Bertrand said, please come back. Totally impressed. Um, so you are a shero. That's coming from Katie Revive Harley. That's Katie did. <laughs> a shero. <that's laughs> All right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Jen, Jen Huggins said, you are a hero. So brave. Thank you. Randy Carr says, Aww. what this fine Thank lady you. has, uh, was, well, I, sorry, fine lady has seen so much in her life uh, that we could never complain about today. 
Um, strength of you and your community is amazing. That's again from Katie did. So a lot of great comments. Karen Yvette said Thomas. So a lot of great comments from everyone online. They're so thankful that you joined us. I'm thankful personally. Well, again, really I truly don't believe that I would have achieved what I've achieved in my life without the sacrifices that you and your counterparts chose to make in 1957. I mean, that was an amazing choice and a decision. I mean, for me to hear that that was a decision that you made at 14 just inspires me today. So well, I just yeah. want to say, I thank you for that. I thank you so much for that. Um, well, thank you for having me. I want to give you a chance to just say some last words, say whatever you want. I, I just. It, it's been fun. And, and I appreciate all of the <laughs> accolades that were put in the chat box. and. and uh, wish I could be with all of you. <laughs> you are and, you amazing know, inspiration for sure. Pandemic. Let's let's do what we need to do, and we need to, you know, uh, be supportive of our uh, administration and do what we need to do out there to make um, to to catch up with the, uh, with all the things that have been taken away from us here recently. So uh, we right. need to redefine this country. All right, and we're yeah, gonna do that. Thank you again. I'm inspired so by much. you, and we were gonna. I I just yeah. want to say we we created this show um, because we wanted to make the changes you're talking about. Um, we wanted to, you know, get the word out, get this information, your stories, things like your stories is what we wanted to get the truth to the people. So I truly appreciate. It. Thank you again for joining us. And I do, I would love to have you back. I would love to have you back. So thank, thank you. Thank you so right. much. Thank right. you so much. You guys thank you. Here. Thank you, Miss Lanier. Thank, thank you so much. Thank no you so problem. much. Okay, bye bye. Wow. Wow. All wow. I can Legendary. say is wow. That yeah. Amazing, amazing, wow. amazing, amazing. I don't even have I'm words changed. for it. I am Seriously. like, I'm with you. I'm with you. That, that has impacted me. That that has significantly impacted me. So I can't even just Thank to be able to speak to someone like her that. On. Oh yeah. no, I, I appreciate it. Um I appreciate the opportunity to bring her on. Um for those of my friends who are watching know that Carlotta and I go way back. Um, I first met Carlotta when I was an 18 year old freshman at the University of Colorado. But I also appreciate that we still have living legends with us who are able to tell their story. It's one thing to read about something in a history book or in an encyclopedia or something like that, but to have someone still be here, not only to physically tell their story, to, but to make you aware that this didn't happen not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's a fact. We've talked to someone who was still living through a very segregated United States. And so I, especially I with everything going on now, I mean, everything we've got going on now and to hear, you know, where it was even worse. I mean, and then what it took to get to even where we are now and then to go backwards the way we did over the last four years. I mean, it's just amazing to me. Just that story. It, alone. It, it's been amazing to me the entire time that I've I've known Carlotta mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we've we've talked about certain things about the past. She's counseled me on certain things. Um, we've we've laughed about certain things, but it, it, it's again, one of those things I reflect on, like I wish there were more people like her who were still here, who would come to us and encourage us and inspire yeah. us. And like, you know, this is where we were and we still have a long way to go. We so is. we need to get right. And we heard it from we her. She said, right. we still have a long way to go. Get right, we need to get huh. right. All right, so, so thank we, you again. Yes, thank you again, Carla. So we, we have to end our show. This was a very deep show, very deep show, but we always do like to end our show. I know we're way over in time, but we can make it happen. We have to have our fun little game show. Let's get it in here. All right, we're going round robin style. I simply ask a question and you'll have four multiple choice answers. This is gonna be uh, black history trivia. All right, get it right, you get a point. 
Now, <laughs> this might be a <laughs> runaway for Liz East, because <laughs> she's like a nah. basic expert. So Gianni Literally. and Rob B, I'm going to give you a little help. She's going she's yeah. to complain about How cheating. She's going to complain about cheating. I'm going to give you a little help. Yeah. I don't need help. You guys can get a little extra time for audience to answer one question for you. <laughs> All right. Are we ready? I'm starting with uh, I'm starting with Gianni Storm on this one because it's a kind of easy question. Let's see. What was the name of Dr. Martin Luther King's father's church? Not not Dr. His not Dr. King's church. His father's church. Was it the First Ebenezer time. Baptist? Atlanta Southern Baptist, Southern Church of the People, or Atlanta Tabernacle? I can't really see that text. I think it's C, Southern Church of the People. Southern Church of the People. Oh, I'm sorry to say that I am certain that is not the right answer. Let's see. I'm certain. <laughs> certain. <laughs> that uh, is incorrect. Can you see that? See it that's why i'm reading it off i'm reading it off for that's you i got, I you. I got go you covered. all the way in i got you covered all right uh but it was the ebenezer baptist church in his spare time king rested wrote and preached at ebenezer baptist a recently restored gym at 407 auburn avenue in atlanta all right our next question is going to be for so rob cool. b what group launched the freedom rides in 1961 was it the aclu uh American Civil Liberties Never Union. Rocky's S from Canada. Remember y'all. SCLC, <laughs> Southern Christian Le <laughs> Leadership Conference, <laughs> CORE, Congress on Racial Equity, of Racial Equity, and or SNCC, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. I'm going to take the multiple choice rule of thumb and take a C. <laughs> <laughs> C. All right. Let's see what the answer is. That is correct. Yeah. Correct. Good job. Why did it work for him? Good job. All right. One point for Rob V. Good job, Rob V. Neil already felt that you would need some help right off the gate. So he ain't going to, you know, get help you against you. you. Shoot, I need help against help you. Failure. All right. <laughs> At the time of historic bus incident, what was Rosa Parks' occupation? Was it a hospital orderly? Drug store it. clerk? Yes. High school cafeteria worker or department store seamstress? I'm reading it. I'm reading it for you. I got it. I'm reading it for you. But what, can you repeat? Can you repeat the um, names of the. Okay. At the time this, of her story bus incident, what was Rosa Parks occupation, Lizzie? Was it his, his hospital orderly, drug store, drug store clerk? I don't know why I can't talk suddenly. A high school cafeteria worker or department store seamstress? To be honest with you, I don't think I know this one. Hospital don't be looking online. Yeah. Don't be cheating. You, you can't get him right. <laughs> Good grief. My hands are here. I'm not looking online. Um, Let's see. She seems like a seamstress to me. Hey, don't be giving answers away. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. We're Johnny, against the world. I've got one point. We teamed up, <laughs> we team up Yanni. We teamed up. Um... <laughs> Girls versus guys. Yeah, I, I want to go with D. You're going to go with D, Seamstress? Yeah, yeah. Johnny's giving you help. For Look at course. that. That is correct. Like I said, you're the one who called her. You're the one who said she might need help. Thank you, G. <laughs> That's so funny. I should give Johnny the point. All right. SNCC <laughs> member Stokely Carmichael was instrumental in forming the Laundes. I think I'm saying that correctly. County Freedom Organization in Alabama. What was its symbol? A balance scale, the letters MLK, a Black Panther, or a raised fist? I can tell you what it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, with Freedom Organization as in. You should be like, you should Ooh. tell Lizzie that she owes you an answer. <laughs> I want to say A. A, the ba a balance scale? Let's see if that's right. Wait, let me see. Oh, I hope. So wait, balance scale, letters MLK, a Black Panther, or raised fist? I know it's not a raised fist or a Black Panther, I think. Okay, so it's A. A, you're going with A? That is incorrect. Incorrect. It is a Black Panther. 
Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seale got permission to adapt the emblem for their Oakland-based Black Panther Party. All right. Okay, so Gianni, zero points for you. You, you may not, you're not going to make it to the third round. All right. Who wrote this best-selling memoir, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings? This is for Rob B. Was it Maya Angelou, Coretta Scott King, Fannie Lou Hamer, or Rosa Parks? The best-selling oh. memoir, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sing. Come on, Rob. Come on, Rob. Coretta Scott King. Coretta Scott King. All right, on, let's Rob. check it. That is incorrect. Oh, yeah. Incorrect, oh, yeah. Robbie. Yeah. Incorrect. It Bobby, is from Maya oh, yeah, Angelou. I know that one. Bobby, I have three copies of it here, so I can send you I was going to say, I figured <laughs> Lizzie has read a few of it a few times. I the book Maya explores her early years spent in St. Louis and Stamps, Arkansas. He's going to give me some random question. Let's see here. Hopefully it's, it's a yeah. tough one. Yeah. Oh, my God. You oh, get the easiest on. one of all. Oh, you, oh this, my God. This is clay. This is clay. <laughs> what was Muhammad Ali's original name? Was that it Leviticus clay. Lewis, Marcellus Moore, Cassius Clay, or Aaron Brown? You say Cassius Clay? All right, let's try <laughs> This is like the easiest question. That is correct. Correct. Who was Maya Angelou? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maya right. Angelou was it. Well, Robbie, you got one chance to beat her. At least you, can, you have a chance to tie. Let's see. I'm sorry, Gianni, right. you're out. You're out. In 1960, <laughs> four African-American college students staged a sit-in that helped integrate this store's lunch counter. Was it on, Woolworth, W.T. Grant, G. G.C. Murphy, S.S. Krez, I don't know what that is. Oh, name of the store? Yeah. Yep, the name of the store. I remember the event. Vaughn Perry said, oh, by the way, Vaughn Perry says his mama called him Cassius. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad Ali. Yeah, I'm going to take a C again. Really? You, should, I, 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 you, can, you, can, you can check Maybe with the a. audience. I'll give you a chance to check with Maybe the audience. A. Yeah, okay. I, I could have taken the C. Oh, okay. All right. I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> Clearly, that's not working. <laughs> Give me the Muhammad Ali question. <laughs> <laughs> that is incorrect, Rob That means that Lizzie wins the game. Good job, Lizzie. Good job. <laughs> By the way, it, it was Woolworths. The uh, store was in downtown Greensboro, North Carolina. So I was about to say it's a store. I think in at least a couple of cities, it's still around. I yep. think Woolworths is still around in a couple of cities. Yeah, it is in, in a couple of cities. It is. Um, I do. I, I lived in Greensboro, North Carolina for a while, so I actually remember there. I right. visited Greensboro a few times. Yeah, I got family in Greensboro, so. Like it's like wow. everybody's from North Carolina for some reason. All right, right. let's get a, <laughs> let's get our shout outs in. Let's get our shout outs in. All right, let's start off with Gianni Storm. Shout out Gianni Storm. Um, shout out to the shout out to the truth um the TLS Creatives Contest, also called um name that t-shirt or design that t-shirt um this is the last week to enter so enter you don't even at this point just have a creative idea or a creative um uh photograph or something to submit the link will be in the bio on all of our social media all right robbie rock shout out uh shout out to all of the audience members that joined us this evening and in the participation it was great to see so many of you actively engaged in what was going on uh and special thanks to our guests that was just an absolutely amazing hour lizzie enders shout out to again um just piggybacking off of rob shout out to carlotta walls lanier shout out to her daughter my that's Brooklyn year, and to her son, Whitney Lanier. Like, shout out to everybody. You know, this has been such a great experience and a learning experience even for me today, just consuming all of our information and the story. So let's keep it moving, folks. Let, let's move forward with diversity and equality in this country. 
All right, yeah. so I was, I before, I read my, before I say my shout out, I want to read some of the comments. I saw some comments. So a uh, bunch of people were playing the game. It looks like uh, Jacqueline Robinson, Ron Perry, uh, Jeanette Brown. Everybody was playing. They got some right answers, too. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, by the way, uh, it says Karen Yvette Thompson says there's a museum in Greensboro that's worth visiting after COVID's over. And then uh, the Woolworth Company is now a footlocker, says Mike Wolf. Oh. Yeah. So my shout out goes to Pie Cycling and Fitness in College Park, Maryland. The gym has struggled to survive the pandemic, but still open for business. If you're, look if you're in the Washington, D.C. area looking for an amazing, clean, safe place to work out, please visit www.posh.fit and hey if you have a business event or person you want to give a shout out to follow our hosts on social media and reach out to any of them in their social media feeds and they may just shout you out that is all the time we have for today's show i'd like to thank you all for joining us we hope that maybe you learned something gained a new perspective or just got some things off your chest Please don't forget to subscribe, like, follow at TLS Live Show. We need your support to keep this going. Also, click the donate button on our page so that you can donate if you'd like to. Now, if you missed any of today's episodes, subscribe on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe to the audio replay of the podcast on iTunes or anywhere you listen to your podcast. I had a fun time today. I hope you did too. I learned so much. I'm sending a special thank you to Miss Carlotta Walls Lanier. Amazing thank story. You. We are truly honored you chose to share that story with us. Thank Our thank next you. live show is on Wednesday, February 24th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll have Akil Abdullah, who was the first African American male to qualify for the Summer Olympics in the sport of rowing and the first African-American rower to win the coveted Diamond Skulls race. So it should be another amazing show. And our winner for today's show was Miss Lizzie Enders. So Lizzie Enders gives our final thought for the day. <laughs> My final thought, just a reminder to everyone out there, all of our viewers, all of our listeners, this is the final week of Black History Month. Despite what you heard, despite what you think you know, there's still more to learn. So do some research, do some investigating, and figure out what's going on with Black history in this country. Remember, Carter G. Woodson wrote The Miseducation of the Negro for a reason. And that yes. reason was we weren't learning all about Black history. So go out, folks, and learn something. This was an amazing was show again, and I think all that joined us we had a packed show today on all the platforms actually a ton of people were watching so i want to thank you guys for joining us thank you ravi thank you gianni thank you lizzie and we will see you next time